Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Denali-49. When last we were with our heroes, they had discovered secret messages between Pellet and the Night Hag of the Swamp. The information uncovered that Pellet was a usurper and wasn't even human after all. The documents showed that King Pellet was actually an Arcanaloth, or Fiend. These creatures were able to take the form of anything they want and are dedicated agents of evil. Other items included a strange bag were discovered and are currently being used to hold the incriminating paperwork. We rejoin the group as they speed across the open tundra towards the coast and the flying porpoise. I'm hungry again, complained Sir Omel as his cont had jostled him around. The others began to chide him that he had eaten twice as much as anyone else and they had important business to attend to. Grish snapped at him, stating that he could eat his fill once they got aboard ship. Their fast pace and splitting across the center of the territory brought them to the coastline shortly after midday. Is that smoke? asked Brother Stance of the Verte Order. The others caught a glimpse of the rising plume of smoke just as some scrubland emerged. As they circumvented the natural barrier, they arrived at the coast, but each looked on in shock. The smoke seen ri was rising from the waterline and where the flying porpoise had once been moored but now only a charred wreck was present. The large Zenobian jumped off his exhausted mount and ran to the edge of the water. Fists raised in anger, he yelled out, No! and fell to the ground. Their only means back to Saydown had been burned to the waterline and was now useless. The others dismounted and joined their friend, looking shocked at the turn of events. His face, roiled in anger, Grish stood up and began to pump his fists. Santos! Santos, you wretch! I will have my revenge on you! vowed the large man. Sir Omel and Harris, the mage, gingerly moved to the water's edge and reported several bloated bodies present. The pair came back up and reported that some of the bodies showed slashing damage, as if attacked by blades. The Zenobian was inconsolable, and his face was nearly purple from anger. The rest of the party began to weigh their options, pointing out that their contas had been ridden to exhaustion. As the situation was discussed, a low rumbling was felt and heard. Phidias piped up first, stating, Sabas? But Yolanda shook her head and stated that they were noiseless. The group turned to look south at the small rise where heads began to pop up over the hill. Sunlight glinted off the green armor of the horse riders. The group moved together to form a phalanx as fifteen riders quickly approached. Brother Stance murmured to Harris the mage asking him if he had anything helpful. The response didn't garner much faith, but that didn't stop the wizard from fiddling in his components pouch. Everyone gripped their weapons as the riders approached, and Grish stood in the center. The cavalry unit stopped ten feet away from the group, and the lead rider jumped off his horse and tossed his helm to one side. Santos! exclaimed Grish. You will pay for this. You will pay for all of this. We have discovered... But he was cut off by the green guardsman, who began to speak. Grish, under my authority as the captain of the green guards, per King Pellet, I hereby arrest you in his name. Your execution has been ordered, along with these, these associates of yours. Get on your knees and you will receive your punishment now. Anger boiled over on the Zenobian, who holstered his weapon and began to advance with outstretched arms towards the new leader of the green guards. The party hoisted their weapons as the other guards quickly dismounted. Everyone ready? asked Sir Omel. The arcane words were now heard from Harris, 
and the group noticed that Harris was now in five different locations surrounding the guardsmen who looked quite bewildered. Grish crashed into Santos with such force that both were knocked prone. A swirl of dust rose as they tumbled across the land. A severe pummeling was being doled out upon Santos and two green guards advanced and poised themselves to stab the angry cleric in the back. As their blades came down, one man was kicked in the head, knocking him out, while the other, ready to deliver a killing blow, had his blade hung up on Sir Omel's own weapon. Sir Omel used his weapon to disarm the green guard. Yolanda joined the fray using both blades to carve into their ranks. Several guards went after Harris and struck true, only to discover that their blades went through the smiling mage without injury. Phidias saw the strikes and gasped in horror until he realized that Harris was standing next to him. A wink from the wizard brought a broad smile to the gnome who replied, Nice! before pulling both of his daggers and charging into the pile of warriors. Harris raised his hands and began to fling his glowing magic missiles at green armored men. The middle of the fight, blood flowed freely as Omel, Stance, Grish, and Yolanda had all been cut and had done significant damage to the other's ranks. The ferocity of the fight was impressive, and slowly the ranks of the green guards began to fall. Within minutes, the odds had evened, but Grish and Santos were still locked together. Harris used the last of his magic to expel flames from his fingertips, burning several more guards, but singeing Phidias and Stance in the process, who fell too close to the flames. Omel leveled his sword through the helm of one warrior and had to pick up the fallen man's weapon as his was embedded into the man's skull. As the green guard continued to fall, both Grish and Santos, covered in blood, fought for their lives. The cleric finally got the upper hand and was successfully pummeling Santos when a dagger found its mark into the Zenobian side. A present from the true king, sneered Santos. Exclaiming in pain, Grish brought his fist down into Santos' blood-covered face, smashing it in upon itself. Grish rolled off his opponent, just as Yolanda and Brother Stance finished off their own enemies. The group gathered around Grish, who was having trouble breathing. He attempted to reassure his friends and cast a quick healing spell upon himself. Rising in pain, his face still pale, he ordered the horses be gathered and pointed out that they needed to go to Tigo's Vale. Sir Omel and Yolanda argued that they needed to rest, but the cleric was clear. There, there will be more. He saw them. This was just, this was just a scouting party. Apair, Apair has a ship. He will help us. The horses were rounded up and the Kanta freed to resume their lives. As Omel and Stance helped Grish onto the largest horse, he leaned over its neck in obvious pain. Are you sure about this? asked a concerned Yolanda, to which Grish responded with a shaking head. Yeah, we must hurry. Get me to Apair. No one noticed as Phidias picked up the dagger that Santos had used. The gnome examined it closely and noticed a viscous fluid still residing on a portion of the blade. He tasted the additive and quickly spit it out, finding it toxic. Before he could proceed further, Yolanda had moved her horse next to him, grabbed him by the collar, and tossed him on the mount behind her. With the group speeding towards Tigo's Vale, Phidias told Yolanda what he had discovered. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.